Welcome to Comic Tropes. I'm your host, Chris. Now, where am I today? Obviously not in the studio. No, I am in a town called Takarazuka, which is about an hour east by train from Osaka, where the subject of today's video, Osamu Tezuka, was born. Why Takarazuka? Because this is where he grew up. Osamu Tezuka, what made him so special? Well, he was the descendant of the famous samurai Hattori Hanzo. He was a licensed medical doctor, and he served in the Japanese army during World War II. We're not gonna talk about any of that because it's much more interesting to talk about his career as the godfather of manga. Where better to do that than here at the Osamu Tezuka Museum, which the town built to honor his legacy. This is gonna be exciting, a deep dive into the manga career of Osamu Tezuka. And before I go any further, let's have a word from our sponsor this week. A lot of you know that I balance YouTube with a day job, which doesn't always leave me with a lot of time to make my meals. Today's sponsor, Factor, helped out with that by delivering right to my doorstep, fresh, never frozen meals that help me balance my nutritional needs. I happened to actually notice a lot of my coworkers were eating some of these, so I decided to give it a try. With Factor, I was able to skip things like going to the grocery store, skip the measuring, the chopping, the prep, and just focus on the quality and taste that I want. In just two minutes, I was able to enjoy meals like this herb crusted chicken. There are over 35 meals to choose from every week. I was able to choose some that met not just my taste preferences, but also promote a healthy lifestyle. For instance, I'm diabetic, so I was able to order from the keto meal set, get options like this that focus on meat and veggies and have healthy things like broccoli rice. Every week, you're going to be given tons of options. And with Factor, you can be sure that you are making a sustainable choice. For instance, Factor offsets 100% of their delivery emissions and sources 100% renewable energy for their production sites and offices. No, this one's for me. So if you head over to factor75.com or check the link in the description below, type in Comic Tropes 50 and get 50% off your first Factor box. Mmm, this is good. Osamu Tezuka was a ridiculously prolific writer and artist. This visual timeline of his manga work gives you an idea of how much overlap there was with his multiple stories. He is said to have illustrated over 150,000 pages within his relatively short career of just over 40 years. That includes over 500 titles and over 70 animated pieces. So I'm not going to try to focus on listing every story, nor cover his entire life chronologically, but rather, I will discuss what he changed and popularized in manga. We'll discuss his early life to set the stage, then review his work ethic, his techniques, and the new genres he explored and popularized. Osamu Tezuka was born November 3, 1928, in Osaka as the eldest of three children to a well-to-do family. When he was still a toddler, the family moved east to the small town of Takarazuka. Tezuka loved drawing from an early age, creating manga after being inspired by sci-fi writers like Uno Jaza and short animated films that his father would screen at home with a hand-cranked projector. He loved illustrating the insects in his area and discovered that there was a beetle named Osamushi, so he insisted that his grade school teachers call him by his new nickname. While Tezuka could get in trouble drawing in class, he was lucky to have teachers like his third grade teacher, Mr. Anai, who encouraged him to keep drawing. By the time Tezuka was in middle school, Japan had gone to war with China, which continued into World War II. Japan was strapped for resources, and the military began running the schools. Drawing manga was strongly discouraged, but again, Tezuka lucked out with an art teacher, Mr. Okazaki, who once again told Tezuka that he had talent and not to give up. While doing military drills at school, he was vaccinated with a dirty needle that caused his arms to become infected with a bad fungus like athlete's foot. The doctor told him 
that if he hadn't got it checked when he did, he was at risk of blood poisoning and amputation. The doctor saved Tezuka from being unable to draw, and it helped inspire Tezuka to apply to medical school when he got older. In the early post-war days of Japan, Tezuka had two important interactions with American soldiers who were at the time occupying Japan. In one instance, Tezuka was playing the piano at the YMCA, which hosted some of Tezuka's medical classes. While playing, an American soldier walked up and began singing an aria by Mozart to accompany Tezuka's playing. While they couldn't communicate very well, Tezuka thanked the soldier, Joe, by drawing a portrait, and Joe gave Tezuka some American comics, which inspired his later storytelling. The second interaction wasn't as pleasant. While interning in the hospital, Tezuka bumped into a GI, who responded by punching Tezuka in the face, knocking him down. Tezuka couldn't understand what the soldier was saying. Tezuka would later add recurring themes in his manga of characters having trouble understanding one another, from the mysterious underground men to empty belly blues, and how different cultures had trouble getting along, like in Ambassador Adam, which evolved into Mighty Adam, or as it's known in the West, Astro Boy. Following the war, Tezuka worked towards his medical degree while also breaking into manga at just age 17. So, the first thing we should talk about in terms of Tezuka influencing future mangaka is his work ethic. His first professionally published work was Diary of Machan, a humor manga about a little schoolboy, which was published in the Osaka children's newspaper Shokukumin Shinban. It was instantly popular, and the newspaper even made wooden toys based on Machan. While Tezuka wasn't compensated for this, he was just excited to see his work catch on. In rapid succession, Tezuka released several long-form manga. Shin Takarajima was an updated version of Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island, written in collaboration with Sakai Shichima. When published in 1947, it instantly sold over 400,000 copies. This was all done while Tezuka was studying to be a doctor and also participating in the school theater club. Early works that then overlapped included The Strange Voyage of Dr. Tiger, The Mysterious Dr. Koronko, and Tezuka's trilogy of sci-fi titles, The Lost World, Metropolis, and Next World. By now, his work had attracted the attention of publishers in Tokyo, which could reach a larger audience, and Tezuka began his serialized story, The Jungle Emperor, in the boys' magazine Manga Shonen from 1950 through 1954. Tezuka was used to telling complete stories, or short gag manga, but this was his first time breaking up a long-form story into serialized chapters and it was good experience for him in terms of how to pace his stories. That said, Jungle Emperor typically had more pages each month than the humor manga, with 8 to 10 and sometimes as many as 18 pages. The Jungle Emperor is more epic than just seeing a lion become the leader. Tezuka follows generations of animals, with the titular Jungle Emperor's birth as a white lion named Leo all the way to his death, as he spends his life working to find a safe haven for his fellow animals. Leo believes that there could be peace between humans and animals if they understood each other. The manga rolls in Tezuka's early love of nature with his desire to see different cultures communicate clearly. In 1951, Tezuka graduated and became a licensed doctor, but opted to follow his love of manga with the encouragement of his mother and his college mentor. That same year, he began a manga called Ambassador Adam, which featured the robot boy Adam as a supporting character. It wasn't an immediate hit with readers, and Tezuka realized that it was probably too much of an epic story that didn't read well in small chapters. He and the publisher opted to reboot the title as Mighty Adam, featuring Adam as a boy who was actually a robot with amazing strength and power. Adam would battle humans and robots in the name of peace, 
Tezuka said one of the most important themes in Mighty Adam was the dangers of war. The manga also formed the tropes that shonen manga is known for today. A protagonist that gets more and more powerful with experience in regular battles. Mighty Adam ran for 17 years, and it cannot be overstated how popular it was in Japan, with toys and eventually animation based on it. Tezuka used personal touches in creating Adam. The character had two big cowlicks, which Tezuka dealt with as a young child. The futuristic cities mirrored both Japan's rebuilding after the war and the exciting cityscapes and crowds drawn by American comics artist George McManus, whose strip, Bringing Up Father, was published in Japan before the war. Even today, there are new interpretations of the popular character, like Pluto by Naoki Urasawa, and toys and games based on Adam are still bestsellers. Tezuka was known for taking on so many manga assignments that his editors would track him down and all wait in his room to get pages right away so that they could hit their deadlines, which were always close. But because his titles sold so well, they were willing to wait. Tezuka's work ethic is admirable, but shouldn't necessarily be idealized. He had a wife and children, but would often rent a hotel room to keep working in the city close to publishers, and may only see them two or three days out of the week. His pace isn't something most artists can do, so he was building unrealistic expectations with publishers and artists inspired by him. But what made his work so popular? For that, let's talk about some of Tezuka's techniques. First, manga at the time tended to be mostly gag manga, short humor strips like you'd find in the newspaper today. There was also Akaban cheaply produced manga, named as such because they used a lot of red on the cover to catch the eye, Aka meaning red. Tezuka started with humor manga, but quickly began telling long-form stories. Some books, like Metropolis, would be over 100 pages of a full story. Jungle Emperor and Mighty Adam may only be 8 to 10 pages, but went on for years. This serialized, ongoing story structure felt new and epic to readers at the time, and Tezuka's artwork emphasized that. Yes, his early artwork aimed at young children is relatively cartoony and features open line work, but it also used cinematic techniques that were revolutionary. Tezuka didn't pace things out with standard grid panels. He'd let action play out over several panels or pages so that the readers could see the reactions of the characters. Until then, artists were trying to jam as much information into the few pages they'd have each month. Tezuka knew that his decompressed storytelling could be misused, but he used it carefully to emphasize important story beats. He'd also do things like occasionally break a panel border to emphasize action. It was dynamic and exciting and still holds up. He also did things that the readers simply did not expect. He'd have tragic endings from time to time. This simply was not done. But Tezuka believed in never speaking down to the audience. He once wrote, quote, Some people mistakenly think that manga always have to be funny, but the true value of manga exists in their ability, through illustrations and expression, to make readers weep, feel excited, and even think seriously. As long as manga can make people weep or feel anger, manga will continue to expand their expressive possibilities. This technique would become known as story manga, and it would explode in popularity in Japan. One last technique Tezuka innovated was his so-called star system. This has nothing to do with outer space, but more like movie stars. Tezuka came up with archetypes that he could reuse in his stories. For instance, Rock debuted in 1949's Little Rock Home as a boy detective, innocent, but a little bit of a rascal. In Next World, Rock appears as a new character, an aspiring journalist, who becomes imprisoned and full of despair. And in Vampire, Rock becomes a villain, charming and charismatic. Villains like Ham Egg would return, and even main characters like Adam or Blackjack could pop up in roles in other stories. They weren't the same characters, but it was a type of visual shorthand 
that treated them like actors who could play roles in new stories. And speaking of new stories, Tezuka really earned his godfather of manga name by pioneering new types of stories. For instance, in 1953, Tezuka began a serialized story called Princess Knight in the girls' magazine Shoujo Club. There had been manga aimed at girls, but this was the first to be a long-form story manga aimed at such readers, and they embraced it wholeheartedly. The story follows a princess, Sapphire, who was born with both a girl's pink heart and a boy's blue heart, and she pretends to be a prince to prevent an evil duke from taking over her kingdom. Tezuka had grown up inspired by the all-female acting troupe the Takarazuka Review when he was young. Sometimes, the women had played male characters. In 1967, manga aimed at adults was growing in popularity as readers aged. And Tezuka ultimately changed with the times, creating what is these days called Gekiga, manga aimed at an adult audience. He started his own manga magazine, Com, for this purpose. Some of his early work included Dororo, about a young girl orphaned from war, inspired by the many post-war orphans Tezuka encountered in the late 40s and 50s. He made Ayoko, a tragedy about a horrible family that imprisons their daughter in the basement so that she won't reveal their terrible secrets. Buddha was a long-form examination of the Buddha and his founding of Buddhism. Blackjack was about an unlicensed but brilliant surgeon who traveled the world solving tough medical cases. My personal favorite from this era, which lasted until Tezuka's death in 1989, was Phoenix. Phoenix jumps back and forth from early human civilization to the end of it in the distant future. It was technically incomplete, but each arc is a full story, and there were eight arcs released. Each deals with the theme of people or humanity looking to extend their lives. It's beautiful, tragic, and epic in equal measure. Tezuka's artwork from 1967 forward also makes moves towards more realism. His scenes in Buddha feature tranquil nature scenes full of gorgeous detail to pour over. Tezuka had his flaws. He could overcommit or fall behind on deadlines when a project didn't interest him, even if others depended on him. For instance, his first foray into animation with the movie Sayuki at Toei Studios in 1959. Some of his endeavors, like Mushi Productions, did go out of business. And some of his work in animation was equally influential to Japan for both good and bad. His animation of Mighty Atom was a huge hit, and the first natively produced animated TV series. However, it also made a lot of cost-cutting measures that would become standard in anime, like animating on the threes, or only eight drawings per second compared to the usual twelve, recycled motions, and, of course, completely still shots. There's no way of knowing what manga or anime would look like without Tezuka. And it's a tragedy that he passed away so young in 1989. But we can at least enjoy the thousands of stories he gave us and note how influential it was to future generations. Tezuka Sensei passed away in 1989 sadly leaving unfinished work like Phoenix, for instance. But he continues to inspire. And as recently as this year, there are new adaptations of his material with things like Phoenix and Astro Boy getting new animation interpretations. Just amazing. Uh, a man who loved to work. His famous last words to his nurse were, uh, let me read this, I'm begging you, let me work. We should all be so hardworking and love our work as much as Tezuka Sensei. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I'll see you real soon. And until next time, keep reading comics or manga. Bye. Hey folks, Chris here. 
thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my wonderful patrons for making this happen. Thank you also to Factor for sponsoring this meal. Again, check out factor75.com. And if you use the code comictropes50, you'll get 50% off your first box. My wife and I sincerely really enjoy those meals. Uh, if you want to learn more about Osamu Tezuka, there is so much to learn. There are some lovely documentaries you can find online on YouTube. For instance, there's one from about 1985 that NHK, the Japanese public broadcaster, made. Uh, and there's a, a lot of books, of course, about his life. I like this one. This is a manga called The Osamu Tezuka Story. It is by Toshio Ban. And Toshio Ban was basically, um, oh, how do you even describe him? He was an artist that worked at Tezuka Productions. He had sort of a vaguely defined role, but he draws in a very similar style to uh, Tezuka. And this really does tell in explicit detail his entire life story. It's over 900 pages, so it is a massive volume. It was really indispensable in trying to understand who he was. Now, one thing is, it is a bit hagiographic, as in it kind of emphasizes his good qualities and doesn't really get into any of his shortcomings. Uh, I'm not trying to say that he was a perfect person. At the same time, I love his manga. Everything I've read, I've really enjoyed. Phoenix is definitely really high up there. I've made episodes early on in this channel about, um, uh, I keep say, wanting to say Mighty Adam, but uh, Astro Boy, Astro Boy. Um, I love this shirt. Look at that, that's so good. And I strongly recommend, if you ever have the opportunity, if you're in say the um, Osaka area, go out to see the Osamu Tezuka Museum. It's gorgeous. It's not humongous, but it has a lot about his life. Thank you so much. Uh, I will see you soon. Until then, keep reading comics.